Hey guys, time to take a look at tech and games and all that sort of thing. And hallelujah, Nick Cowan, the associate editor of Stuff, has brought a game to the party. Thank you, Nick. It's wonderful to see you and wonderful to see that you are going to be talking about a game. Tell us about this one called Greedfall. Okay, so Greedfall is what you would call a adventure RPG, which means role-playing game. Uh, what that means in layman's terms is you are given a character, um, that character is given a series of quests, and um, as you go through the game, you can pick up loot, you can fight monsters and beasties, you can... Um, <clears throat> You have skill trees, which you can level up that makes your character stronger. But essentially what pulls you on uh, through the game is the narrative. In this case, you play a, uh, it's kind of halfway between fantasy and reality um, because on the one hand, you are gonna be running into beasts that bear no resemblance to the animals we have on planet earth. But on the other side of the coin, you have human beings behaving exactly the way that we always behave, especially during the days of imperialism. You play a character called Dassad, who is sent to a new island um, in order to set up a trading post, build alliances with the other factions on the islands and the native population, and also find a cure for a plague that is ravaging um, the old world back home. And in order to do that, you'll meet new people, you'll have loads of conversations, you will uncover conspiracies and uh, plot lines, which are really, really interesting. And uh, it's a good solid, I'd say, 20 to 25 hours of your time. So if you're locked inside um, and you want to stay warm, you could do worse than this. Okay, so I judge by your, you sent off to an island to go and meet people and maybe kill them um, and take whatever you want back to the old world. Um, that this is a, a sly little take on, on colonialism. It is. Um, rather than um, t kill the locals and take what you want, what you're doing there for your faction is essentially build trade routes throughout the island. Now, unfortunately, the other factions who have also come over from the old world don't really feel the same way as you. Um, one faction essentially wants to take what the natives have and once again take it back home. And the other faction is actually trying to push their religion on the native population um, under penalty of death. Um, they have missionaries that they send through the island to scope out whether or not the natives are amenable to this. And if they're not, they simply go to their villages and take what they want and round up people who they think are non-believers. Um, so, yeah, it, 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 it does dovetail back to the days of colonialism in a way. Um, and also, like the days of colonialism, you have a native population on the island who oscillate between, you know, welcoming the settlers and going, let's all just get along and other native population who are going, who the hell are you? What are you doing here? Get off my land. Mm -hmm. who, who's, who's this game uh, targeted at, Nick? Um, I would say it's uh, players who are a little bit more towards the hardcore. Um, first of all, it's a massive time commitment. So you are going to be playing it for a very long time. Like I said, 20 to 25 hours. If you decide to buy the expansion pack because you like what you saw, that's another three hours right there. Um, it's also, you know, you, you have to micromanage a couple of things. You have to micromanage your skill trees, your abilities, um, the way that you power up. But you also have to display a little bit of diplomacy. You know, for example, um, in order to get certain factions to like you, for example, are you going to be on the native population side in certain um, quarrels or are you going to back um, the settlers from the old world? And this is a tricky balance that you have to keep going, mainly due to the fact that when it all comes down to the wire right at the end of the game without spoiling anything, you're going to need as many alliances as you possibly can get. Ah, OK. Now... Listen, we, we get a fair amount of emails through on a gaming at Mansfield Today that contains the number two, mansfieldtoday.com. Um, mm -hmm. And you there just talking about it could take you around 20, 25 hours. One of the emails I do recall that came through came from a group of companies who represent a whole load of gaming equipment. Um, mm. And they evidently wanted you to test drive a gaming seat for them. So yep. what we'll do 
is we'll get them to uh, deliver that to you. And maybe next week, we can have a look at this particular gaming suite. The reason why I say it is from what I can understand, it's been ergonomically designed for a game player like you who sits for hours and hours and hours and it has all the adjustments necessary to make your, your gaming experience a lot better. But I will leave that to you to, okay. to handle it and tell us about it, if you don't mind, Nick. Nick. Will do. It will make an improvement on the uh, kitchen chair I've been using. <laughs> Nick Carr, the associate editor of Stuff Magazine, who looks after our uh, techno and gaming stuff. That's it for uh, gaming this week. As I said, you can send us any emails, any suggestions you want about the gaming sector, um, any games you want us to take a look at, or any other parts of it. Then send us an, uh, an email to gaming at mansfieldtoday.co.za. Until next time, cheerio bye.